Hi, Beck Mac here for Pops Art, and I am at Opera Queensland to talk to the incredible Ali McGregor about her new work, The Call. Ali, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good. How are you? Now, uh, Lorelei was last year. Was it last year? Yes. yes. Yes, it was extraordinary. And coming out of that, has that sort of spurred you on to make this work, realising that audiences are hungry for new Australian works? Well, after we uh, created Lorelei and seeing the success of that when we first did it in Victoria, um, it is what prompted me to start Fluxus, which is my little company, which is coming up with concepts for new operatic work and collaborating with opera companies. And this, The Call, is our sort of first cab off the rank, if you will. Patrick's been, you know, I've worked with Patrick a lot. He's a long-time supporter and he was just really into the idea. Um, obviously loved Lorelei. And so this is kind of the natural extension of that, of um, trying to find a new space of how we can tell contemporary stories um, in an operatic way um, and just finding new ways to play with the form yeah, really. Yeah. Mm. And with this work it's based on a true story that uh, an extraordinary phone call changes someone's life forever. How did you come across this story? I heard it on a podcast called The Moth. It's a live storytelling podcast and this woman was telling the story, the concept of this story, it's like a storytelling slam if you will and they t tell like 10 minute stories, they have to be true stories um, and they have to be just told without notes and, and so they're really genuine moments and I heard this story, as I said, 10 minute story and it stopped me in my tracks. It was just a, a beautiful story, um, it had all sorts of resonance to me and, and my life and people I knew. Um, and it was just a beautiful story about hope, but it was also a story that I felt akin. It was one of those moments, I think, where you think I could have been in that position if I'd just made a few different decisions in my life along the way. So it, yeah. it felt really relatable. And I think everyone in the audience will feel that. Either, either they felt they personally could have been in that position or they'll know someone who either has been in that position or could have very easily you know ended up in that sort of space and then just ultimately it's a story about um, connection mm. um, and about hope and you know this was a, a, an idea that Patrick and I discussed when we were deep in lockdown certainly we were in Melbourne and so the idea of connection was really important of how do we connect with people how do we tell stories uh, so I think it was it was really timely for that reason. Yeah. Like yearning for it. Yeah, and how important it is yeah. for us all. Um, and connection isn't just about having a conversation. It's yeah. actually about listening yes. and someone yeah. listening to you um, without judging. And yeah. that's kind of what this boils down to. And also, I guess, how um, technology and devices have really stepped in as a, as a way that we communicate. Is that a little bit of the exploration? Uh, sort of. Um, it's not something – I mean, certainly we are finding new ways um, – with technology to tell this story. Um, but I think this, in a way, yeah, I hadn't really thought about leaning into that as a theme, um, but it certainly is a modern story in that way. I mean, I don't know if you would have got the same kind of connection, I don't know, with smoke signals or something. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, right. dancing, <laughs> bit of contemporary dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is interpretive dance in oh, the spectacle. Right there. Fantastic. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> now, you are the core artist. It's your concept. Um, what's the process of bringing all this together? Like, if, if you've come up with an idea, like, particularly in the world that you work in, which is main stage opera, like, it's quite unique in, it, in a way from my perceptions. Like, how... Like, what's the sort of process of bringing it from your your mind, your inspiration to a main a, a main Australian stage? The process really for me is first of all I'll have an idea um, and I'll try and think of the creatives I think that will really bond with that idea. And for me, with this one, um, Kate Miller Heidke was the first person I thought of. Um, I, I got to get along really well with Kate. I knew she would just see the same resonance that I did. Um, and she um, brought Kia along to work on the script. Um, and then I have a database, actually. Whenever I go and see a show um, and there's any Australian artists or creatives in it, if I really like something I see or, you know, if I think the, the words are great, the music's great, the direction's great, the lighting's great, I put them on my little database. And then when things like this came up and when I was talking to Patrick and I thought, okay, this is something we could make in Queensland, I was like, 
there was that Queensland composer I heard at a Katie Noonan concert and it was Conor Donetto. And so um, I spoke to him about it. I listened to some of his music and I thought, oh, this is actually a perfect, this is like the irony of it. My phone's ringing. <laughs> Do you need to get that? No. It might be a call that could change your life. Uh, <laughs> since I'm too old and it's too late in the day for that. Okay. <laughs> um, no, so that was really a matter of just matchmaking and, and chatting to these people and seeing if they, if I saw that spark in their eye and everyone when I spoke to on this project that ended up working on it, uh, that spark, I told them the story and I saw that spark immediately. And I also really try and work with, um, you know, obviously people who, whose work I really like, but people that I want to be in a room with and making, making creative new work with. I originally didn't think I would be in this and it was Patrick who said, yeah, you will. And I was like, oh, I hadn't <laughs> thought, thought of that. Um, and it's not something I want to just create work for myself going on. I definitely just want to create lots of work for lots of other people. But, um, yeah, this was – I think Patrick could see that I had a real bond with this piece as well. So, But, yeah, so then it was just a matter of talking and, you know, I think we were bringing Lorelai here anyway. So Patrick and I talked a lot about this idea and he was super on board with it. So this was a really smooth transition. I've got two other pieces in, in works at the moment and – I'm sort of going through the same process, but they're taking a little longer because I haven't just found that one person to sort of take that idea and run with it. Um, quite yeah, you need your key collaborator, don't you, that believes in it as much as you and commits to it? Yeah, you do. Yeah. But also, you know, you need someone who's going to be able to finance it because it, it's an expensive thing. So, um, and I think where I see Flux is sitting is a lot of opera companies do want to make new work, yeah. but it does take a lot of time yeah. and it takes personnel and opera companies are all you know, stretch to the limit at the moment. So my idea is that to let them outsource that to me and I can put those teams together and then I can bring that to them and they can, you know, they can help bring it to stage. So, um, I love yeah. that idea. And I love the idea of your little black book. Oh, to have a look who's in there, hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should see my notes section when I'm uh, not so much. No, I only put good people in my book. <laughs> Everyone out there now wants to be in your book, I'm sure. It's a good book. It's a database, actually. I love a spreadsheet. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all about the spreadsheets. And talking about the work itself, it's got the a really contemporary sound. And I think I heard there's an electric guitar. Is that right? Yeah, there is. We wanted to have a kind of urban feel and there's electronics. There's a sort of soundscape with it as well. Um, I think, you know, we are, there's some pretty heavy themes and very contemporary themes um, of, you know, of, of, of drug addiction. And um, to me, that's, that part of the story had a very kind of metallic kind of urban um, texture, I think, yeah. to it. And so we wanted to represent that to really offset the softer, more ethereal moments in it, the moments that are just about, you know, the feelings that you have and um, that are timeless. But there was a part of the story that I think is very contemporary we wanted to have that and again the big thing for me is finding new textures new ways to present opera um and you know without breaking what we already have i love classical opera i i, I love you know i i'm actually a bit of a purist when it comes to that but i think there's ways of keeping the integrity of that classicism mm. while kind of bringing in you know it's not kind of doing you know a pop version of carmen like beyonce did in a pepsi ad which was brilliant <laughs> yes. And I bow down to her, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> i got to see that. <laughs> yeah, she totally did the, you know, famous Habanera um, Carmen Aria, but for a Pepsi ad, but okay. like Beyonce. It's on YouTube. Find it. It's my Check YouTube. that out. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, um, you know, I was just, Patrick was just describing that the actual Cremorne will be transformed. So it's like a, an, almost like an immersive journey into a space in a way. As the core artist and I guess your vision – what would you ultimately want the audience to experience by seeing this work? I would really love the audience to come in. And as I said, I would love them to kind of instantly find a way to connect with this story. And I think that, as I said, could be a, a sense like I did of, God, if I'd made some different choices when I was younger, I could have ended up like this person. Um, or I want them to feel like maybe I could have been the person on the other end of the phone. Maybe the, you know, the power of this person who just listens without judgment yeah. um, is something that I think we all find really hard to do. And I was sort of saying I find it hard with like my kids. I just want to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. But actually what we need sometimes is just someone to listen, yeah. not to solve it, yeah. not to, you know, to, to judge it, just to listen. Yeah. And I would really love the audience to come out of this and think of 
the power of just being there for someone. Oh, I'm definitely going to come along and be there for you, Ali. Oh, you really took me there then. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to see this work. As I said, Lorelei was just extraordinary. And when whenever I talk about it, when I talk about my sort of newfound love of opera, Lorelei is the number one, which I love to talk about. So you're an incredible artist. You're bringing a whole new idea of what opera can be to Australian stages and opening it up to new audiences, which is always crucial for something to continue its life. So um, thank you so much, Ali, and I look forward to seeing this show. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for chatting to us and thank you so much for just supporting opera. I think it's really important that we do find a new audience because otherwise it will die. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank you.